All right, we're back on this series of videos on using a micron gauge, kind of understanding what effects that rubber refrigerant hose have on it, the difference between a silicone dedicated vacuum hose. Later, we'll go into metal lines. I will fabricate a metal refrigerant line or vacuum hose off of my gauges. That'll be later where I use a metal copper, soft copper line removing rubber hoses and we use all metal coming off of the gauges, but that's much later. So here we are, we found our peak on our level out. As you see, it's leveling out right there. And I actually lost contact at 30 minutes, but you could see right about there, it was about 20, 29 minutes and going into 30 minutes and so, it started peaking, it leveled out. So this is the vacuum decay and actually it lost contact. The battery safety went off on this and it shut down and it lost contact with my uh, Android pad. So we're at 12, 18, 12, 19. It's kind of steadying right there. So that is the vacuum decay of the hoses, just the hoses by themselves. But we know this tank is capable of going down to 26 microns. And right now, since I started this series of videos, I have had these valves closed with no vacuum on them and the vacuum decay has went up to 82 microns. So we know this tank is a good reference tank. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to reopen and apply vacuum through the Navac vacuum pump. And if you are curious, this is the model right there. It's at the NRD. 16T, capable of going down to three microns. So it's more than suffice for the duty that we're using this for. So let's open up the vacuum and let's wash the vacuum. We'll get back down there before we open it up to the tank. So let it go back down. And let's uh, recapture, because we lost contact here. There it goes, it caught on again. No, it didn't. It's reading it, but it still has its own. So let's uh, get out of there, let's get out of here. Let's start over again. Let's take a nice fresh graph. We'll go to measurements under the microns. Right now, this is the temperature and pressures. So let's go to microns, we're at 76. Let's graft it and we're gonna start fresh again. So now we have a new graft and you can see it slowly start going down. I don't know if I could be patient enough to wait because I think uh, 48 microns was its limit. So we're just gonna open it right here. Where are we at right here? We're at 84 microns in the tank. We're at 76 microns in the refrigerant hoses. So my vacuum inside my manifold, where my sensor is for the micron gauge, is lower than what the vacuum is at the tank of this system. We're pretending this volume of this tank, this would be like a big Chevy Suburban with two evaporators, one in the front, one in the rear. They have like 15, 20 feet of hose and line set going all the way to the rear evaporator, then the hose and line set that goes to the front evaporator then you have a large accumulator then you have all the internal surface area of the condenser and all the hoses and lines is about what this entire surface volume inside this tank is so this is representative of a chevy suburban with dual air conditioning so let's open you see we have the low side open we have the high side open we have the vacuum open you see we're at 58 microns Let's now open our valves to this tank that's 85 microns. And we can see we're steadily going down. Let's open this up. And we'll open this up. And we'll let this run. I have some chores to do today. Uh, I'll let this run for hours. And when I come back in about eight, nine hours, 12 hours, whenever I come back, we will see where this has reached. 
And then this time we're gonna do a vacuum decay of the refrigerant gauges, the lines attached to the clean, dry recovery container that we know is capable of going down to 26 microns because we proved that in the first video. So that's our baseline. We're gonna see where we can get with a pair of refrigerant hoses on a good vacuum pump using a silicone hose and see where it goes after a few hours and we're gonna perform a nitrogen decay test and we'll capture and see. Because before, just the hoses went up to 1200 microns, that's a fail, that's no good. And so your system could be good, but your hoses are affecting your micron readings. It's not that your system has a leak, it's not that you didn't get all the moisture out, you're using rubber uh, refrigerant charging hoses. So we'll do that, and then later we will do some brand new hoses and see the difference between old hoses and brand new hoses. And yes, these are yellow jacket. I don't get the crappy eBay. I don't get the guy with the, who's the tool company? Green is there, bright green is there. Those things are crap. Um, or any other brand. I don't get JB, I don't get Best, I don't get anything. I get Yellow Jacket. Why do I get Yellow Jacket? Because over the last, over four decades that I've been doing air conditioning, Yellow Jacket has always proven himself and the other hoses have always proven themselves as failures. All right guys, I'll see you.